What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Knights of Horror. It's been a while since we did an episode of the Knights of the Roundtable, so let's round up the troops and let's get to the roundtable because we have a lot to discuss today. I am your host, Anthony. Today with me, I have Rob, who is a member of the Knights of Horror and runs the Howling Hour and is also a boobro. So go, you know, check all that stuff out while you're at it. And on the fence movie reviews, you know, the guy does a lot of things. I do uh, a lot. Of, I do a lot of things. Does a lot of things. <laughs> he, he sprinkles his magic a little everywhere, you know. Um, Today on the Knights of the Round Table, we're going to be talking about Halloween Horror Nights, not, uh, not Scary Farm, a little bit of uh, Six Flags, uh, Fright Fest, and Hollow Scream. Not much to talk about in the last two. We're just going to just give our opinions and, and theories about what we hope to get announced soon. Uh, but let's kick it off, man. I want to start talking about Halloween Horror Nights. A lot has happened since we've done a, a, an episode of the Knights of the Round Table. Obviously, if you guys are subscribed to the channel, if you guys have been on the channel, you guys know that we are constantly, uh, thanks to Will, are releasing weekly construction updates over at Universal Studios Hollywood and it's been a blast to just uh, while editing the videos I have not seen the construction so it's like me looking at the construction for the first time as a viewer um, so it's it's cool to edit the videos and see what's progressed and to just see what you guys think about it so um, a lot of progression has happened with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We can almost pretty much confirm, and, uh, and I'm not going to officially confirm it. I, I get this a lot in the comments. Like, it's pretty much confirmed at this point. I don't officially confirm things until it gets announced. Yeah, the you know, everything is there, and everything tells us it's going to be this, you know, from facade leaks to uh, stuff that we can see over the walls. It pretty much confirms that this property is going to show up at Horror Nights, but I do not officially confirm anything until Murdy or Horror Nights or Universal themselves officially announce it as it's coming to the event there's a lot to talk about with the water world queue a lot to talk about with the mummy queue um a lot to talk about with Persian courtyard a lot to talk about with the curious george area uh studio tour coming by the tram uh, garage uh and even some soundstage 29 stuff so let's get right into it with water world obviously uh we are the ones who kind of uh pretty much let out that Halloween 3 Season of the Witch is looking about 90% sure that it's coming. And and, and I and I want to say 100% just because I've seen all the evidence <laughs> and everything. But like I said, that extra 10% is just for the waiting of the confirmation from Universal. Just Halloween for safety. 3, just, just for, for safety. safety, yeah. They could just they could flip it on us real quick and, and, and do what they did with Titans of Terror, where it was originally supposed to be The Conjuring, and then it happened to be Titans of Terror. So that's why I don't 100% confirm anything. Something can change last minute. Um but Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, man, this is – and Rob knows this. Logan is a huge fan of this film. He knows it. Everyone from the Knights of Horror knows this. We want this maze to come to HHN. Now, the biggest argument we always have here with, you know, the Boo Bros, with, um, you know, here at the Knights of Horror is the general population – is going to want to see Michael Myers. Obviously, because with the name Halloween, the first thing you think of is Michael Myers. But the diehard fans are going to love this maze um, because it's Halloween three seasons of the witch. We never thought we'd see this coming to the event. We've seen every other Halloween property just about at the event. Halloween one, Halloween two, Halloween four even. Um, and he's even been represented with the Titans of Terror. So we've seen Michael Myers at the event a lot. So this is going to be a very, very risky move on Universal to release Halloween 3. But I don't care because I've been waiting for this maze to come to Halloween Horror Nights for a while. Rob, what is your thoughts about the Waterworld queue, man? Here's This is – I'm right on the boat with you. Um, Waterworld. Get it? I'm on the boat with you. Waterworld. So there you go. Um, it's the Mariner. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we – we, as a diehard horror community, know about uh, H3, uh, uh, Season of the Witch, and we want it to come. We need it to come. We've been... Need it. Yes. Just we've like been... this vaccine, we need it. We want yes. it to come. We want the vaccine. We need it. We want Halloween 3. We need it. And according to Anthony, we're 90% sure that it will be here. And I'm going to go with Anthony on this because uh, just because the the the... the footage that we've seen and and the little references that we've we've caught it looks like it's coming i would be super happy yes so like anthony was saying your average you know horror fan who isn't really into halloween or or i don't even know if you can say there's average horror fans I, like, I, the way i consider an average and the reason why i say the general population is is the people who who probably watch horror movies because, you know, it's in pop culture, it's whatnot, yeah. and a lot of people like it, and, and go to these events because they they have a good time and they get scared. Whereas, you know, me and you, 
year round we're speculating we're we're you know we're doing construction updates we're we're you know we're we're watching the films in preparation you know yep. you know we're you know we're we're catching the easter egg you know like th that's the die hard compared to the general population and there's nothing right, wrong with right. being in that general population oh yeah no, 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 for sure for but sure but you could tell that audience between the die hard audience and i think the die right. hard audience is going to appreciate this maze even more yes and with with saying that i think that the diehard audience that's it this is what it is the diehard audience wants this maze need this maze as you stated to come i think your general the general population that comes into hhn who are just there to have a good time just to get scared i feel like they're gonna appreciate this maze yes they may be thrown off at first there is no michael myers and you know who knows what they will do they may maybe throw an easter egg of michael myers or something you know i mean have him to cut you off real quick, there is an Easter egg in Halloween three, right? Of the guy uh, before he, you know, when he gets caught, you know, on, you know, they're having the 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 horror movie marathon, and what's right. playing on the TV? Halloween right. one. So there you go. So maybe we get that little Easter egg. Maybe we get a physical form of Michael Myers in there. Who knows? But I feel like you're the average fan of HHN who comes in who doesn't know about Halloween three will come in, walk through this maze and become a fan of Halloween three and possibly even go watch Halloween three. So, which is why I think doing mazes like this can only benefit the franchise because we know how good it is. And if, if they're fans of Halloween period, yes, there's no small reference to Michael Myers, but they will see a good maze because we know they put on quality at HHN. They will see a good maze. They will see something different. And which is for me, that's a huge thing different i love different no matter where you are at what maze you do what even if you're copying something else that you did last year if you throw some differences in there i'm all for it so right. i think that your average fan will go through this maze and be like i like it, it even i enjoy it so i think it's going to be a good thing now there's your there's your fan there's your obviously your diehard fans of, of the halloween franchise who typically don't like halloween 3 because it's called Halloween 3, and there's no Michael Myers. What a lot of people don't know about Halloween, let me give you a little brief history about Halloween 3, okay? so Take some, take some notes, people. Take, take some, some notes, notes, people. Right and this might change your mind over of how you think of the movie or not. First off, when you watch the film, don't think of it as a Halloween film. Just call it Season of the Witch. Now, I understand it's called Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is Halloween was actually originally supposed to be an anthology series. Um, Michael Myers was only supposed to have the two movies where, obviously, you have the first night in Halloween. And that you know there was that setup in, in one. And John Carpenter actually didn't even want to do a Halloween 2. He actually got drunk writing that script. That's why <laughs> Halloween 2018 changed a lot of things where Laurie Strode is no longer Michael Myers' sister. They're not even related. It was kind of like a soft reboot. Uh, continuing from one so Halloween 2018 was probably John Carpenter uh, you know when he when he thought about it years later that was probably what he originally wanted to do but instead we got Halloween 2 which don't get me wrong still a phenomenal film it, it's one of my favorites too um, with that being said though the studio when he came to the studio about Halloween 3 you know he, he had this idea you know I want to do this movie season of the witch uh, you know it's gonna have this this and this you know it's gonna be about a cult uh, they're gonna try to kill kids the studio would not let him do this film unless he put in the Halloween title in it. The studio physically told him this movie won't make any money unless the Halloween title is in it. I strongly disagree with that opinion, but that that was the the deal in order to get that movie made. And so he kind of threw Halloween in the mix, and that's when he came up with the idea of maybe Halloween could be an anthology series. You know what I mean? Um, so for a lot of people who do not like Halloween 3 because there is no Michael Myers, take all that in mind. Now, with all that being said... Give Halloween 3 a rewatch. Really pay attention to the storyline and, and really the creepiness and the overall what the owner of Silver Shamrock was trying to do. And we don't know because it ends in a cliffhanger, but he may have accomplished what he tried to do. But really think about what he was doing. He was making masks to sell to kids, and then he was going to play a broadcast, a broadcast transmission that had a chip they had a chip attached in the back of the mask and the chip was going to react to the flash and end up turning the kids heads into like mush and have all these insect creatures come out that's fucking evil like if if that was in real life i think everyone would it would just be chaos it'd be evil not to mention these creatures are all venomous creatures so like if you get bit by a snake or something you're dead so 
not only will the kids die, but the, the parents around the kids, families would die. It would be a sacrifice to whatever they were sacrificing to. But it's a fucked up film, but it's a really good film. Um, so I'm excited for Halloween 3. I hope that after telling a lot of the fans that, they'll go back and rewatch Halloween 3 because it wasn't until years later that I actually went back. I was the same way about Halloween 3 for the longest. And then years later, I went back to rewatch it, and I'm like, this is a pretty goddamn good film. I really th enjoy that. And Logan is on board with me. We will defend that film to the day we die. Rob, I'm pretty sure you're the same way. Great film, a uh, fun cult classic, and uh, it's something that I have to watch every Halloween because it is a Halloween film. Well, I mean, the, the same thing for me. I, I, I like to watch all the Halloween films. Halloween's probably my second favorite scary movie, uh, if you will, even though I, I really don't think it's too scary now that I'm an adult. More of a but, slasher. But yeah, it's a slasher kind of movie. But I would um, say Halloween 3 is more of a horror kind yes. of cult, you know. Yeah, so, um, you know, around Halloween time, I like to just stack them up and watch them and get through them and kind of a tradition I have. But, yes, I'm on board with you guys as far as – the love for Halloween three. I think if more people gave it a shot now, uh, I think it would kind of have a resurgence, at least just in my opinion, at least I'm right. I'm hope I'm hoping, but it's a good movie. If you have not seen it, you should check it out, especially before it's 90% according to Anthony coming to HHN. Right. Um, you know, and, and one of the things I want to get for the set obviously is the silver shamrock masks. Uh, they're iconic, the skull, the pumpkin, the witch, uh, all iconic. You know what would have been a really cool Easter egg, though, too, if they wanted to throw it in the film? Is Silver Shamrock actually producing Michael Myers masks? Like, that would have been really that, cool. Easter that egg, you know would what I mean? be cool. That uh, would be cool. I actually love this movie so much that I, I had, I, I, I kind of want a sequel to this film to see what happens after. So I started kind of writing my own fan sequel about, like, you know, Silver Shamrock has been down for so many years and uh, it's going to be coming with a resurgence where, you know, um, the owner's nephew now takes over the company and he's going to start doing the same thing his 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 uh his uncle did back in the day and a new group of people like say uh the main guy his his kids grew up so they they realized what had happened and what was going on so now they have to go stop silver shamrock again from doing it again and they have a new idea for the mask but the masks are a lot scarier like it would just be really cool to kind of do like i i had a fan sequel i'm writing it as a script i'm hoping i can get it made if not i mean I'll always have it to read it. So, got to got to copyright that thing so no one steals it from you. Nah, nah Universal is gonna just See, sue me for that. <laughs> <laughs> See, and and this is just on on a personal level for me. I I I know you and Logan love this movie, and I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of it. But I'm not gonna say I love it the way you guys do. And so, I want it to be there i want it when we go into hhn i want to know that halloween 3 season of the witch will be there because i want you guys to be able to be like i walked through this maze this is a maze that we probably we, i mean most of us thought we were never going to get right and you guys are going to get a walk through it i'm, I'm going to start crying right now i'm gonna get emotional because <laughs> i i just it's one of those just, things where like, I, I can't wait till we all go opening night and we all oh, walk yeah. through it and we're losing our yes. shit to all the scenes, seeing all the Easter eggs and just having a good time with it. Here's the thing is I don't want no video evidence of me just crying. Okay. <laughs> if I'm just tears of joy coming out of my eyes, I don't want video evidence of that. <laughs> right. But uh, let, let's move on now from the Waterworld queue a little bit down the streets to uh, Parisian courtyard. This, yes. is, this was rumored on HN nightmares map to be a gauntlet of some sort. Uh, the only gauntlet that I remember having at the event was the purge gauntlet. Um, but now the construction is leaning towards more of a maze because uh, the gauntlet took place in all of Parisian Courtyard. Um, well, you know, usually with Parisian Courtyard, the maze starts right in front of Mel's Diner. And we're seeing in our last construction update that Will made uh, a tent pop up with uh, a little brief kind of crack that we saw of some construction wood maze in that area. Uh, now... With speculation and whatnot, I cannot tell you what this is. I really can't. I would have to look at 2020's HN Nightmares uh, map to kind of get an idea of what it might be. But this is going to be a hard one to kind of figure out. They're still in early stages with this maze. So let me, uh, let me tell you guys right now. Hold on. Let me, let me tell you guys right now what this is going to be. He's getting set up. Here we go. Hold on. This is going to be The Walking Dead. Oh, God. Yeah, The Walking Dead. No, that's you that's next to the no. That's no, it already no, has this thing. This is gonna be Walking Dead. No, I'm just playing. Um, 
okay so like you all i remember is the purge from this so i i mean my mind goes to the purge because it's been there they've right. done it but it, it's just it's it's pretty much impossible to speculate because we don't have any idea. There's not been uh, a mass, you know, like a, a one of those baby face masks just laying around somewhere to right. be like, oh, this is this is uh, the purge or this is Happy Death Day Part Three. Right. Um, so we really, I mean, to sit here, like, I would literally just have to be like, you know, okay, well, if I'm gonna throw out anything, I could throw out anything. So, but you know what? I'm excited for that because it's something we do not know. Right. It's something that for at least for a little while is from this video comes out. We don't know what it is. So we can speculate to what it possibly could be. So it could be anything. So, and that's part of the fun of looking at these maps, looking at this construction updates to be like, well, what are they going to put there? So, I mean, I'm with you, Anthony. I don't know. I hope it's something good. I'm going to throw this out there because go this, ahead, is, go. this is one maze. I have not heard a lot over here at Hollywood. I'm going to speculate that maze right there is going to be universal monsters. Ooh, that, I mean, it's a, it's a good spot for it. It's a really I mean, good that's spot. Where the for original it. was. Yeah. You know, yeah. and the sequel happened to be in the Metro sets, but to bring it back, we know it's the space, you know, we don't have to have the graveyard scene again. That was, you know, special for that one. Right. If we do the brides, I think that's a perfect amount of space for it. You know, it's a big space right there. He, yeah. you, Murray uses, utilizes that space really well. Um, and I can easily see the brides going there. I think uh, you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. We are 0% confirmed. Oh, we have that, no idea what's going yeah, on. I'm yeah, just going to speculate yeah. right now. That's where yeah. Universal Monsters the Brides is going. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna agree with you. That's because, I mean, we've had Universal Monsters there. So it, it it's not like it's an uh, unfamiliar area for, right. for these properties. So. I, I, I mean, if I was going to say anything, that's definitely a, a good a guess on what could possibly be there. A lot of people are also speculating an original maze as well, uh, created by John Murdy. Uh, we know that the original mazes at Universal Studios slap uh, Pandora's Box, Holidays in Hell, fantastic mazes. Um, I always considered Universal Monsters to kind of be its own original thing, even though it takes a little stuff from the movies, but they kind of always... They Frankenstein it really. They kind of yeah. take stuff from the movies, but then he puts his own take on things as well. Yeah, they, they don't. Uh, it didn't follow the movie's storyline, so right. I, I would say it, you know it's it's an original. Um, I it's guess original I, based on IPs of Universal's yeah. history. There you go. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you heard it here. It could be from what everyone's been telling me, an original is going to go there. But I'm going to speculate right now. Here are on the nights of horror, 425 21. This is when I speculated this at 1042 p.m. I'm going to speculate that's Universal Monsters. And I said it was The Walking Dead. So <laughs> even though that's right next door, <laughs> even though it's right next door, <laughs> that's the extended, that's the extended, like you walk out of the exit and then you go right into the, yeah, the, the well, last part. Well, remember the last Walking Dead, they had, you know, it was like the longest Walking Dead maze ever. So when this they, is going to terminus. Yeah, so this is going to be the longest, longest Walking Dead maze Boom. ever. So. Double the long. Longest to the power of two. Yeah, there you uh, go. Let's move over to the Mummy queue now. Uh, obviously, this is speculating to be uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, a, a friend, you know, this is not. This is no stranger to the event. He's been at the event for many years now, uh, making reoccurring appearances. Uh, and it's looking, everything's looking like it. The facade looks like the house. Um, back when we were still in lockdown, uh, Santa Clarita Joan would fly his drone over and we would see, you know, the facade, which looked very reminiscent to the house. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Uh, and especially with the hype of them releasing a Texas Chainsaw Massacre film this year, which is supposed to do, but basically it's Halloween 2018 where wipe the history and start from go from one to now um this will build up hype for that film uh i, I am a fan of texas chainsaw massacre so if they want to bring the uh the uh the property back to kind of you know rewatch the first film go through the maze and then get ready for the next film kind of deal where they always do that with a lot of stuff with you know with creep show they've done it with um crimson peak you know a lot of properties that come to hhn they usually do that you know for if a new season's coming out you know go through this and experience a new season so Texas Chainsaw Massacre, man. What do you think? Well, uh, I mean, it's 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 a legend. When when it comes to HHN, uh, Texas Chainsaw is a legendary maze. Leatherface is 
an icon of of just the event. So, and with them coming out with uh, the a new movie, I feel like it, it it only like they don't have to bring it, but it's smart for them to bring it because uh, a few factors. One is you have a movie that's coming out, and two, um, it's something that they already know how to do. They they've done it before. They've done it several times, so it's not something where they're they you know, have to figure out how do we do this? How do we, they kind of have an idea of how Leatherface, you know, a maze should work. And, you know, one, one thing walking through a Leatherface uh, maze, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre maze um, is the smell. I always, that smell that they have of like, it's supposed to be like flesh. Yeah, I don't, it smells like bacon to me so i really really do it just makes me bacon you you're yeah. the second person that said that when i went to the rain it's hair maze my buddy's like this fleshy smells like bacon i'm like what kind of bacon do you guys eat well i you know i typically eat the un the uncured bacon you know the thick kind so you know it's just it's that's when i walk through it with my wife she's like she's ready to vomit and i'm just like it smells like bacon i'm i want to i want a blt oh um, god yeah, so so you're thinking about food with all this gore going on. <laughs> yes, so I mean I'm a big guy, so I, <laughs> food I get reminded of food in a lot of places. But anyways, so yes, the smell is one thing. When I think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, an amaze, the first thing that pops in my head is not chainsaw. It's not someone weighing another it's man's bacon. face. It's bacon. The smell of a smell of bacon <laughs> being cooked. Um, but yes, the smell of that rotting flesh if you will the smell of the the chainsaw smoke the sound of the chainsaw uh the flashing lights i just think uh, uh hhn they know how to do a Ch texas chainsaw massacre maze and um it looks like it's gonna be there i'm excited for it to be there i think it's in this year where we were uncertain it's a solid maze for them to bring back and that we know that they can do it right I'm going to percentage this one as a 75% only because we don't have as much details as we did with Waterworld. Um, okay. Obviously, we, we're going off the facade. We can see a little bit of the ending of what's going on. So this is about a 75% confirmation that this uh, potentially, you know, speculating that this will come to the event. Again, nothing's official till Universal or Murdy releases something. But we're at about a 75% uh, that we're thinking that this is going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, moving from there, a little bit down the way right here to Soundstage 29, uh, one that we don't get to see inside too often, but I have heard talks of people seeing uh, walls based around construction for HHN. Um, now, I'm going to throw this out there, and I don't mean to you know bring anyone's mood down for this, but also keep in mind, these are working sound stages. So if you do see walls, it could potentially be for a set, but I'm not ruling out that it's HHN construction. Uh, Soundstage 29, which is rumored to be the haunting of Hill House, I want this one to still come, even though obviously it would have been perfect for last year to set up the uh, season two for a haunting of Bly Manor would have been good promotional material, but I still want this one to come. I think this will be a phenomenal maze. There's a lot of good scares to capitalize on. The house itself is iconic. Um, and I really want to see this maze come to the event. Uh, what do you think, man? Um, I'm with you, uh, especially in the sound stage. I think it's a perfect spot for this type of maze uh i i wasn't a huge fan of of, of bly manor but hill house was it, to this day still for me is is a legendary season the first season is legendary it it's got good scares and i can i watching uh watching it on netflix i was just like this and, and i'm sure you do this too all the time because we all do this us hha fans and us horror fans we we watched something and I when I seen Haunting of the House, I was like, this would be a great maze at HHN. Yeah. So I hope it comes because there's so many things, so many set designs in uh, the series that I think would would be phenomenal to walk through and that would just lend itself excellent to walk through and put in a, a maze. So um I could already, you know, I could just see like just certain certain seen certain sections you know the 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 mortuary you know the the actual the the manor itself when you walk inside you know just the way it's the the stairs and the hallways i, I could just picture it all so i really really do hope 
that this comes to HHN Hollywood. Now, one thing I want to do with the fans, if this does get confirmed for HHN this year, obviously something that we do yearly now at the Nights of Horror uh, with HHN preparation is when we watch, you know, said movies or shows. Um, I want to watch this entire first season if it does come to the thing, to the event with fans. Even if we have to do two episodes a week uh, leading up to the event, we'll start early on. Uh, you know, the minute it, the minute something gets announced. Uh, we can start planning ahead like, okay, maybe we'll, we'll start, you know, around this week leading up to like the final week before HHN. That way, by the time, you know, we're dead said and done, we've watched all of uh, Hill House. We've watched all the films, whatever's going to be there, and we can have a good watch party with everyone. So expect that in the future. We'll have a uh, Nights of Four live stream with HHN preparation coming soon um, when stuff starts getting announced. So. I'm really excited for that. I know, uh, you know, Rob will probably join us. We might get an appearance from Batman or the werewolf or uh, or, or Santa. I mean, even. I even saw freaking Batman was over on the Boo Bros channel, bro, giving oh. his thoughts. You know, like I didn't even think that was possible. You know, I thought it was a Knights of Horror exclusive, but then Batman just does what he wants. So yeah, he he I'm walked happy. in. And he he told me he's like, hey, get out of the seat. Well, he's like, hey, get out of the seat. And I was like, I mean, you don't argue with Batman, so I was like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, I got you. you. You do your thing, man. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Honey in a Hell House looking like Soundstage 29, obviously. Uh, that was where it was rumored to be. Again, we can't really confirm this one yet. Uh, you know, I'm going I'm going to put this at a low 10% right now because we can't get a really good look inside, and it's only been rumored that it's going to be in that location. Who knows if it even might return this year, so we'll see. Let's head over now to the Curious George, what they're calling this spot, the Curious George parking lot view. Looking down below, right across from the tram garage, it's looking like we're going to get two mazes there. Now, let's go back to 2020. I don't want to, but let's go. <laughs> uh, two mazes were going to be in the metro sets of uh, where Creepshow was last year. Uh, rumored to be Billie Eilish and Beetlejuice. From talks and rumors, Billie Eilish is out. Okay. From what I've heard. I don't know how much it's true. I don't know what's going on. But Billie Eilish is out of the event. So it leaves you to two properties. One of the properties, I'm going to speculate it here right now. And I think I actually mentioned it in one of the construction updates that we did uh, about two weeks ago. I'm going to speculate right now that one of those mazes is going to be Beetlejuice. Which is why I wore this shirt on the podcast today. Because... Beetlejuice was a fan favorite for the weekend it was up in Orlando. Beetlejuice is a well-known icon. Uh, the film is very popular. Everyone knows Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice even has a home at Universal Studios during the day. He even took over the event last year on 80s nights. On Thursday, he hosted 80s nights. Beetlejuice is a well-known icon, and I think to test the water to see if a comedy maze uh, slash horror maze would work, they did that with Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters happened to be a huge hit on both coasts, I believe. And I know for sure it was a hit over here in Hollywood. I, I don't know how it was in Orlando, if it was a big hit, but it was, a, it was a big hit over here in Hollywood. So now if you bring another comedy slash horror property to the event, Beetlejuice, it's going to be another big hit. Beetlejuice, like I said, is a household name. Everyone loves Beetlejuice. I am personally a Michael Keaton fan, so I would love to see Beetlejuice at the event. I'm calling it right now. If Beetlejuice does happen to come to the event, I'm speculating it's going to be in that new Curious George location. Okay, that's... uh. Give me one second. Okay, I just talked to my East Coast guys, and they said Beetlejuice was a hit over there on the East Coast. So there you go. Um, Wait, hold on. Did you, like, open a magic portal like Doctor Strange or yeah, something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or... I got them right here. What... I, and I was just Eddie Tain. You were just Eddie Tain. Um, I was yeah, just Eddie Tain. I was just Eddie Tain. So, um, again, I, I've i seen some of the pictures from last year from over there on the East Coast, and – some of the the footage and i was just like this this is a cool colorful dark maze that we need to have over here because i am also uh being a batman fan i am also that entire you know makes me a michael keaton fan as well yep um guy's a phenomenal also, actor oh yeah yeah o overall just his his entire career so uh beetlejuice being one of those amazing characters that that you know he has been um I love the character of Beetlejuice. I, you know, I remember watching this uh, when I was young and it, 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 when I was younger, it was scary. And as an adult now, I'm just like, it's scary and funny. It's hilarious. Uh, it's just yeah, watch yeah. him talk shit. It's great. Yeah. It, 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 it's awesome. And, and you, you know, 
when you see Beetlejuice, you know what you're getting. And this is why I think it would work as a maze. Like I, I understand, you know, how you were saying like, oh, you know, the, the comedy, the comedy, you know, scary kind of maze thing, the comedy maze, uh, trying it out with, with Ghostbusters. And, and I understand that. And it's smart of, of Universal Studios to do something like that. But I honestly think Beetlejuice is so iconic that P- and people know it. People would have came no matter what, even even if thankfully Ghostbusters wasn't not, a, you know, wasn't it was a good maze. Thankfully for that. But even if it wasn't a good maze, I still think Beetlejuice would have been awesome without having to, you know, like, oh, let's check because people love Beetlejuice so much. Just, you know, he, like you're saying, his his the comedy, his attitude his just in your face, you know, very blunt style. And and to put sprinkle him throughout a maze, I think would be awesome. And you know, you could just like, I cannot do it. I will not attempt. But you hear his iconic voice in your head, and I'm like, this would be awesome to walk through a maze and hear, you know, the 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 lines that Beetlejuice says. And so, you know, I hope it comes. We don't know what you know. This 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 tent area is right. just kind of out in the nowhere. We don't know what it. There's no. You know, and, and this is this anything. is this is just me wanting Beetlejuice right. to come to the event so badly right. that I'm just going to speculate. And I and I'm gonna be honest with you. And I and, and Murdy is a very smart person. He knows the fans want this, and right. he knows the fans will. And you know, this will be actually probably one of the headline poster events of the event if he does right. come. And he and, and knowing Murdy, he won't let the fans down. So Murdy is going to do everything in his power to make this a possibility. Here's the thing is I don't know where it's going to be, but I have really high hopes. And at least inside me, I feel like Beetlejuice is going to come this year, whether it's in this specific section or another, you know, it another could be in area courtyard for all we know. Yeah, it could be, it could be, but for, for, for this section, I don't know what's going to go here. I hope, you know, it, it, they're not just building some extra parking uh for the people for the people who are working for hhn i hope this is you know this no we we, i can (laughs) confirm at least one of the tents we have seen okay maze panels yeah maze i've seen that so yeah um so i you know if it's beetlejuice awesome if it's another maze even you know it just is awesome because uh we the more mazes we can get to actual full on uh hhn experience will make me happy but i mean yes i want beetlejuice to come tram garage location worked perfect uh in 2019 with us and pandora's box this space is a lot bigger yeah so i'm excited to see what they uh can hold here and i would love to see this return in the future if it does successful i mean this is a big space so you can add at least two mazes here like you did with the tram garage and the tram garage i think was a much smaller space compared to this kind of parking lot of space so this is honestly a space that they can bring back every year because they don't really utilize that unless it's for storage. And you right. can easily take all that stuff out that's used for storage and put the maze there. So it, it, it will work. And, I, and I, you know, I'm always a fan for new maze locations. Here's to hopefully one day we get the, the, the Jurassic World location back. I would love yes. to get that back. Um, but until then, I'm always good with new locations. Now, let's talk about one last thing before we move on to knots because we're already hitting the 30-minute mark in this video. All right, let's um, do this. Let's talk about speculation of potentially a Terra Tram coming back. Yay or nay on this? I'm gonna go yay. Yay, yay Terra well. Tram. I think it's I think it's perfect for obviously. Obviously, I don't know where we'll be in September, October, as far as the world goes. But I think either way, it would be a perfect for making people feel safe. It's an all outdoor experience. You know, there's a lot of social distancing that can happen. You know, in between everything, and there's a big amount of space that they can utilize to to keep the scare actors and guests safe. And, you know, I think it would be a smart idea on Universal's move to it, to bring it back. If any year is going to bring it back, obviously it's been gone since 2018. Um, so if they were going to bring it back any year, this would be the year to bring it back. Well, I've always been a fan of the Terra Tram, regardless, before before everything happened. Um, just because, to me, it it, we, it weeds out the crowd. And it, key, it takes away the crowd from the park that's in other mazes or rides or, or all that stuff. Um, it takes them away from the park for you know, an hour or so, or, you know, 45 minutes, it takes them away from the park where you don't have all these people together. So now they can use it to socially distance people. So I'm all for it coming back. Now, I don't think it would be called the terror tram if they brought it back this year, because what brings that to mind is the walking distance between the tram queue to the new location of the new mazes. Okay. Uh, that would cause a little traffic delay with the tram coming in and, you know, with the lines in. So so I think it will be uh, 
I I don't I honestly don't think we'll have metro sets this year because okay. I haven't seen any construction. The only thing I've been seeing is a lot of movie fo- uh, being filmed back there. So I don't think we'll have metro sets this year. So I think instead of the metro sets, which is usually a walk from obviously the mummy all the way back to you know the metro sets, I right. think instead this year, if you want to go do the terror tram, it's going to be a walk from the queue to the tram, which is easily honestly the same distance. Okay, which. Would be fine with me because I love walking the metro sets, but I never get to walk that area. So I want to go check out that area to the big blue screen, you know. <laughs> you know being a film nerd, I just I like seeing that kind of – and I, 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 you're probably the same way. You yeah, just, yeah. It's the little shit like that that you like to see. So yeah. I hope we get a Terra Tram. There's currently a, a rumor going around that we are going to get seven mazes and four scare zones. I've been hearing that a lot in the community lately. Don't know how true it is. Right now I'm counting two, three, four, five – Six, yeah, about seven. So we got three: uh, Waterworld, Parisian, uh, Mummy, Soundstage Twenty Nine. Um, the two on uh, the new the new spot, and then Terra Tram. You can basically essentially call it an outdoor maze. Cause yeah, so yeah, seven seven attractions for Horror Nights this year. Four scare zones looks likely. Um, I would honestly be okay with that. Uh, I'm more than know. okay with that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm perfectly fine with it. I actually, I feel like oh, what was this like a few months ago? I said that we were probably going to get about five to seven mazes. I didn't throw in any scare zones, but and I had said five to seven mazes, and and I would be happy. And and I mean, I would be happy with anything, but like yeah. as far as you know, my my mindset of what I thought we could do with the knowledge I had of what was going on in the world, I said. Five to seven mazes, and I think that's doable. So it looks like we're almost there. Right. Let's move over now down up the five freeway to good old Buena Park, California, to Knott's Berry Farm, another premier haunt event that's been around that was pretty much the start of it all right here, going on for nearly 50 years now, uh, Knott's Scary Farm. We've had some breaking news come in, obviously, in the last couple weeks that now it is available to buy the Season Pass Not Scary Farm add-on, which lets you go to the event every single night that it runs. Um, so that is exciting news. That That's kind of a green lit. Now, uh, one thing I'm going to bring up is Scott, I believe, from SoCal Exploring, or it was John from the Hauntline. I forget which one. It was one of the two, so I'm getting credit to both of them because it may have been both of them. This doesn't 100% mean that the event is going to happen yet. Okay, they, I think that was Scott that had said something about that. They did do the same thing last year, released the annual pass thing, and reimbursed people after they figured out they weren't going to do an event. Now, here's where the positives come in and gives me hope that this is going to happen this year. Construction has resumed at Not Scary Farm. Now, what do we know about what's coming next year from Not Scary Farm? Well, last year was the end of Special Ops Infected, which was one of my favorite mazes. And last year was also the end of Shadowlands. Special Ops Infected was located in the Mystery Lodge uh, queue in the back of the Mystery Lodge. And Shadowlands was located right under Accelerator. So what does that mean? Uh, Obviously, people from the street can see construction going on over by Shadowlands. And they said there's some new, fresh construction going on. And um, so that's looking good. I can't tell you what Special Ops looks like if they even started back there because that is behind the scenes backstage. Um... However, you could look backstage where near Ghost Rider is where the uh, four mazes are back there, which is usually which last year was the depths, uh, dark entities, paranormal ink and waxworks. Uh, you can get a look at the depths and a little bit of paranormal, but not dark entities or waxworks. All those mazes are indoors in warehouses. So it's looking good for not scary farm this year. 2021 is looking bright. Um, I would love to see not scary farm return. We had a ton of fun in 2019, Sammy and I, that's where we first met Rob and look where we are now. Two years later. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just, he's on the channel. <laughs> um, dreams, so, dreams do come true. Dreams do come true, man. Um, so, uh, what are your thoughts about not scary farm? Obviously you're a fan of this event as well. So yeah, this is, this is, I feel like, you know, one near and dear to my heart because you know i've said this before me and my wife usually spend my birthday uh or at least somewhere around my birthday at not so um i'm hoping uh that you know we, we like you know you said it's not 100 sure because you know stuff ha- you know they did these passes before and then they just refunded people but with every again with everything going on i think things are getting more 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 stable and you know seeing the construction updates there um 
I I think that we are in a good place to to feel that we are going to get a some type of not scary farm this year. So I'm I hope it happens. I I would love it if it happens because we will be there. I'm thinking about getting a pass so I can you know me and Anthony were talking you know go after work and and uh, hit it up for a few hours and and you know maybe on a Thursday night or Friday night. So. I'm hoping it happens. I will be thoroughly ecstatic. And it's just uh, it, Knott's does such a great job with their mazes. And and this is what I think they can put their mazes up pretty quick. And like Anthony was saying, they got, you know, the four the four core mazes, that, you know, backed by Ghost Rider. Um, they, you know, they're in warehouses. So we really don't know what's going on. But I feel like they might be maybe some stuff was left up so they really don't have to do too much work uh as far as you, you know having to plan out because you know they know what it needs it's to minor get done. tweaks so, or minor room yeah, changes that's about yeah it. They, yeah there you go so little tweaks here and there um if we're getting any new mazes who knows uh but i will be happy with anything that knots does for haunt season now, as, as of this recording, Universal Studios is now open to the public, obviously, with their, uh, you know, regular theme park. They're back. Uh, and as of this recording, it is uh, April 25th. Knott's opens for season pass holders May 6th to May 20th, 2021. Exclusive pass, over, uh, pass holder sneak preview. And May 21st, it opens to the general public again. So it's looking good for Knott's Scary Farm to be coming around September, October, which means hopefully in uh, July or August, we get the annual uh, announcement event from Knott's Scary Farm. As you guys know, last year, Sammy and I could not make it out there. So uh, we actually uh, watched the live stream and we, we kind of did a live stream of our own so it was a live stream of a live stream if that makes any sense yes. but and uh, i was i was there watching it with you guys well not with you guys but i was watching it along right. with you guys so uh with obviously us getting passes i know they always invite their pass holders out to the announcement event so hopefully me and rob can get out there when that time comes and even logan and we can actually record and, and film the entire event for everyone um or we you know if, if they're nice enough to invite us out to media uh we would be happy to come out and and represent and and get the word out to knots because you know knights of horror love knots so um Going back out to Ventura, California. <laughs> We're going everywhere in the in the in the in SoCal today. Uh, Six Flags. We have not heard much. The theme park is open. It was the first theme park to open in SoCal. We have not heard much about uh, Fright Fest, but we will keep you guys updated. I know Rob is a big Fright Fest guy. I have never been to the event, so hoping this year will be my first uh, time. So we will keep you guys updated. Uh, and the last one we're going to talk about down the five uh, South Freeway. Um, San Diego, California, SeaWorld, Hello Scream, a new event coming to SoCal this year, an event that is very popular out on the East Coast. If you guys know Eddie Tainment or our boys out in Florida, they cover, um, obviously, Busch Gardens Tampa and Busch Gardens Williamsburg, which actually host a Hello Scream. It is an event that me and Eddie have talked about on the channel multiple times that I've very much been wanting to go to, and now I have that opportunity to go to, and when we do East versus West, it's going to be awesome. Um, have not heard any new news about that. Don't know when they're going to start construction. Uh, don't know themes yet, but as soon as we hear news, uh, you can come check out us. I know Scott will be on top of it as well. Um, so check out one of us even hotline will probably be on top of it as well so we are definitely excited i know me and rob are already talking about taking a trip out to san diego for the weekend to experience the whole uh new uh haunt hello scream i cannot wait i know rob's pretty excited a new haunt can't go wrong with that yeah uh, and we'll keep you guys up to date but that is going to do it with this edition of the knights of the round table i think we covered a lot today a lot of catch up uh and we uh We'll be informing you guys later on of what our thoughts are. Hopefully, we'll get more people on this. Uh, I know a lot of people, you know, Will was slammed with with homework. Rob, or not Rob, Rob's here. Uh, Logan was I'm here. Logan was, you know, slammed with uh, house issues. Uh, and I think Sammy, I, I don't know. He has not responded to any <laughs> text today, so he might be dead from the second dose of the vaccine. He's probably um, just asleep. That's all. He's asleep. He's asleep. He's No, he's probably feeling really sick. Uh, the guy, yeah. guy's got, you know, he gets sick a lot, so he's probably getting sick from that vaccine. Um but hopefully, if that is the case, speedy recovery to you, Sammy. Yes. Um, I, I've been there. I know. But it is well worth it. So thank you guys for watching another episode of Knights of the Roundtable. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe and hit that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. We are on social media at the Knights of Horror on Instagram and at Knights of Horror on Twitter. Check out the Howling Hour. His channel will be linked below. And as well as his social media is the Howling Hour 
on Instagram and it's the Highland Hour on Twitter, right? I don't know. I don't even use my Twitter in forever. <laughs> Doesn't use the Twitter. Just go to Instagram. Yeah. The Highland Just go Hour. To Instagram. You'll find me. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. Um Obviously, check out the Blue Bros. We are both uh, part of the Blue Bros, and we love that. We just filmed, prior to this, a Rain of Terror video breakdown, so it might be up. It might not be. I, I lag on videos. Everyone knows that by now. <laughs> That's probably an ongoing joke behind my back about me lagging on shit when I promise one date, and it comes out like a whole different date. Uh, but go check it out. Uh, full review on Rain of Terror's Halfway to Halloween. We had a blast. Uh, with that being said, we will see you guys on the next video.